Hello, it's Mark from Cars and Cameras, and today we're going to take a look at the Fujifilm X-T3 camera system with a 16 to 80 f4 kit lens. My setup came with a free battery grip, and with the battery grip, you get a AC wall charger, which is really nice because it allows you to charge the batteries when they're in the grip and also run the camera off of AC power when everything is attached. So that's a really nice feature. So it gives you two slots for two batteries. And the nice thing about a Fuji camera is it allows you to put a third battery in the camera body itself. So a total of three batteries in the camera. And that's a nice thing. Okay, so let's take a look at the kit lens. So this is a 16 to 80 kit lens and it is a constant aperture. So that means it is F4 all the way through. So from its widest position to its telephoto position, it is staying at F4. It is not shifting to 5.6 or 6.3 like a lot of lenses. And that is a nice feature for a kit lens. That's something that you just don't see, you know, with a kit lens. That's a really, high, it's a really high quality lens to have that constant aperture. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the accessories that are included with the camera. It does include a separate wall charger, which is really nice. So when you do get a few batteries, you can uh, charge an extra battery while you're charging the extra batteries in camera. And it does just come with one battery. So if you do get this set up, be aware you are going to need a few more batteries because especially shooting video, the camera does burn through those batteries pretty quickly. Okay, so let's look at the camera itself. When everything is set up, it does look really nice. The camera is a lot easier to hold with the battery grip. And that's something to keep in mind that if you're like maybe considering a Sony, especially an APS-C camera like a 6100 or 6400 or 6600, uh, a 6600 uh, series cameras is you don't have those cameras don't have battery grips uh, they do have some aftermarket solutions but they're, they're just complete crap so here's my first shot with the camera and as you can see it turned out really well this is with the Eterna uh, picture profile uh, this was recorded at 400 megabits per second which is the highest bit rate you can record with the camera uh, in 4k so you can see here, this is kind of the maximum picture quality you're going to get a recording internally with the camera. Uh, so it does a really good job uh, recording that. The recording on this camera is really nice, uh, kind of ahead of the Sony in some ways, because with the Sony cameras, you can only record internally at 8-bit and 100 megabits per second. So this one does 400 and this camera records 10 bit. This is also a 10 bit recording. And the difference between 8 bit and 10 bit, 8 bit video gives you 256 shades per color and 10 bit video gives you 1024 shades per color. Kind of decide which one's gonna be better? Well, the 10 bit's gonna be better. It's also dependent on the monitor that you're viewing it on, uh, but if you wanna future proof your recordings, it would be better to record at 10 bit. Okay, so the camera does feature two SD card slots and a headphone jack and a microphone jack. And a lot of the Sony cameras, they just give you a microphone jack, they don't give you a headphone jack. So you have both of those on this camera. Fuji gives you both, which is really nice. The low light performance is really good on this camera. That shot you just saw was a 3200 ISO shot. And the camera performs really well. I would say the maximum I would shoot with this camera would be 6400 ISO. Uh, pretty similar with the Sony. Uh, I would say that this camera is a little noisier at 6400 ISO comparing it to say like a, an A6600, um, but they're very close. Okay, so the screen uh, on the back, it does pull out, but it does not flip out any more than this. And it is kind of stiff. Uh, so it's something to be aware of. If you do need a flip out screen that flips all the way around, you're gonna have to go to the Fujifilm X-T4. That one does allow you to do this. Also, this camera does not have built-in in-body stabilization. To get that, you're gonna have to go to the X-T4. But the lens that I was using here is image stabilized. So you can see here with these handheld shots, the image stabilization with the lens is very good. So as long as you get this camera and you do use a stabilized lens for handheld shooting, you should be fine. But if you do need a camera that's going to have uh, optical stabilization or built-in image stabilization with any lens you use, you will need to step up to the uh, X-T4. But other than that, the camera does a very good job. Um, I would say some of the drawbacks of this camera compared to the Sony would be the autofocus system on this camera is just not as good as the Sony autofocus system. And I'm comparing it to the newer Sony cameras. So that would be the A6100, A6400, A6600. But you can see 
you know, in still photography, the camera does a great job. You can see it nailed the focus, you know, really close up on the ladybug there. Did an excellent job. This camera is a very strong performer for stills as well as video. And I really do like the battery grip. That's something that you're just not going to find. There is no battery grip option on the Sony uh, APS-C series cameras. You have to jump up to the full frame cameras to get that. But this camera does uh, have that option, so that is really nice. You know, with the Sony cameras, I find myself putting the camera in a cage uh, to make it uh, a little ergonomically it's easier to hold because the camera is kind of on the small side. But with this camera, you really don't need the case if you're going to use the battery grip. And I do recommend the battery grip with this camera uh, because the battery capacity on these cameras is very low. Uh, so you really need the battery grip in order to, it to keep up if you're going to be shooting with it for any length of time. You will burn through those batteries pretty quickly. But other than that, like I said, the shots on the camera, the video is really good. Um, I do love the 10-bit recording. Uh, that's a nice feature. I do like the high bit rate recording. Uh, that's a nice feature. And overall, the camera does a good job. The real downside to this camera is going to be the exposure stepping that I noticed. And what that is, is when you move the camera around, if you are letting the camera... Uh, say pick its aperture if you're because you, when you're shooting 4k video you want to lock your exposure at 1 48th of a second and this camera allows you to do that um, with the sony's the closest you're going to get is 1 50th but this camera will actually let you set it to 1 48th of a second but as you move the camera around and as that aperture is increasing and decreasing uh to keep the exposure correct there's a little bit of a, a flicker and stepping going on and you know this is a this camera's been out a little while, and so this camera has the latest firmware revision, and it's still doing it. Another thing is if you look at the stores there where it says stores for lease, the dynamic range of this camera is not as good. The Sony's a little bit better uh, with its Kodak uh, and its recording. You really have to record in the, the log profiles with this camera uh, to get the most dynamic range out of it. If you're just shooting it uh, with the uh, without going into log, uh, you're not going to see as much dynamic range with this camera. So if that's something that's important to you uh, and you don't want to be messing around with, you know, color grading log uh, footage, then I recommend the Sony camera. But other than that, uh, the camera is a great offering. It really is. And for the money, it packs a lot of features. I mean, you're talking about comparing it to a lot of other professional video cameras to get that 10-bit recording, a high bit rate recording, and also have the ability of a camera that shoots stills. This is really nice that it gives you all those features. So you really can't beat it for your dollar. Now, comparing this camera to the uh, X-T4, well, the X-T4 is just a few hundred dollars more. And while the, uh, the recording on the camera is going to be pretty much identical, you're getting that full flip around screen and you're also getting the ability uh, with the uh, built-in image stabilization. And then also that camera features a slightly bigger battery. So maybe with that camera, you could get away without using the battery grip if it was strictly for you know, power reasons just so you wouldn't run out of battery power. So that's my quick rundown, guys, on the uh, Sony X-T3. And like I said, I think this is a really compelling option for somebody considering this over the Sony. It's just things to be aware of is the dynamic range is one, but that's only important if you're not shooting in log because otherwise they're identical. And then also if the autofocus is important to you. And then also is if the difference between the 8-bit and the 10-bit is important to you. So guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.